Although people think of attention and focusing your efforts being going along with the frontal lobe part of the brain, the psychologists have shown that there are what called posterior attentional systems too, particularly the right parietal area there in the back of the brain. And you can ask the computer when you study brain development and hyperactivity, is there any part of the brain that develops differently in hyperactive children than normal children? Because we have all these children, hyperactive and not hyperactive, who had a brain MRI scan every two years over about an 18-year period. And there's one part that shows up, the only one part, and that's in this posterior parietal system, which we know from uh, studies with monkeys and studies with normal volunteers, also lights up in some attentional studies. And to put the story together, it's been shown that hyperactive kids as a group don't use their frontal lobes very efficiently when they're doing studies. Their lobes don't light up in the functional brain imaging studies the way they should compared to non-hyperactive kids. So you put this together and you wonder, maybe it's because the kids who did well are the ones who learned to rely more on that posterior parietal, the posterior attentional system. And so Philip looked to compare the, the good outcome and the bad outcome. And the fact that this part was different was accounted for by the good outcome. And this part stayed thicker, the cortex stayed thicker than you would have predicted as if it was being used more. So we have this sort of complicated story to suggest that um, it can be a way that you compensate for doing, for getting better, and may account for why it is that a third of people get better from the ADHD.